Welcome back to the Hidden Pearls podcast. This is episode 99, which is super crazy, about to hit our 100th episode, and we have something special planned for that, so stay tuned. Um, Just want to say thank you guys for being on this journey with us today for our show. Uh, We have it broken up into a few different spots. I am still in Japan, so the crew is kind of spread out over different time zones, but uh, for this first segment, we have Bruce and George as George gets ready for another game. Um... This time we're playing the Seahawks at home. Uh, So very exciting. They're coming off of a win against the Broncos. Very emotional with quarterback, former quarterback, Russell Wilson. Let's ride Bronco Nation. Let's ride. Um, Anyway, so that's an exciting and that's a fun spot. Um, We've started to add in some different components and um, yeah, some different segments. Uh, I personally love the Dini part, but in it, we talk a little bit about, um, I think we're going to start doing a, uh, a little wine segment. Um, Claire is very into wine and she's also very good at it. And so is the fabulous Riley Till. So we're going to have a little wine segment. So if you guys tune into that and have any comments, you can post it on any of our social media platforms. Um, I'll try to check everything, but you can even post it just right on the YouTube. Uh, so whatever feels good or whatever is easiest for y'all. But then we have Bruce traveling to LA and he is actually in LA for the MVP movie premiere. Um, so MVP is the same organization that we're always working with merging bets and players and And uh, for the movie premiere, the star actor in it is Nate Boyer. He was on a previous Hidden Pearls podcast episode, and I'll have that linked in the show notes so you can go back and watch it if you are curious about that. But um, in this, we just talk about the importance of MVP and coming together and showing up for your community. And so it's really fun to hear Nate's story. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in for this. Make sure, um, and I know I say this in all the podcasts, but if you want to get involved and help our show, a really great thing that you can do is to just share our story. So whether you're sharing it just publicly on your social media or sending it to a friend or even to um, either a former football player or a veteran who you think might need um, MVP, this is a really great way to just kind of spread some light and share some mental health tools um, to make sure that people know that they are never alone. We also have at the very end, um, Nate Boyer's dad. So Pops did an interview with him after watching the show and it's really special. So we just wanted to include that. Um, If the audio is a little hard to hear on the podcast, I apologize. But if you go on to our YouTube channel or even onto our social media, you're going to see the links um, so you can actually watch the show and I have the transcription on it. Um, But either way, I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of this and let's get the show rolling. Hey guys, Bruce Kittle here, Hidden Pearls Podcast Week 2. We got Seattle rolling into Big Levi Stadium. Very, very, very excited. We're looking at 97% chance of rain, mid-60s. It should be a heck of a battle here, not quite in the Bay. All right, welcoming George Kittle. George, how are we today? Hey, Dad. Thanks for having me. Wow. Yeah. It's wonderful to share the camera again. There we go. Okay, let's get rolling on this. Let's Uh, get rolling, Hidden Pearls Podcast Week 2. Excellent. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Niners update. Well, we traveled to Chicago, Windy City, the windy and rainy city. Rainy city. Yeah, it was tough. That was uh, tough for viewing conditions in that outdoor arena that they have, but so it goes. So tell us a little bit about the trip, the game. You didn't play. Um, any observations and or let's look at uh, who did what well. So we can just look at a few of the highlights for those Niners. What are we building on? Mm. Well, yeah, unfortunate loss. You know, it's you definitely want to win the first game of the year. You want to win every single game. Um, had opportunities to win that game. Uh, Bears just, they did right longer, especially in the second half. And I think uh, whoever was leading going to that monsoon in the fourth quarter, I don't know if anyone was going to score points. So uh, kudos to them. Uh, there was a lot of good stuff on the tape. You know, there's some bad stuff on the tape, but a lot of things to build on. And I'm um, really looking forward to this week where the boys can come out and play. And it, while it will be probably wet, uh, it's not going to be monsooning like it was last week. Hopefully, knock on all sorts of wood. Now, um, who played well? Yeah. Um, Trey Williams always does pretty good. Um, no, I thought Elijah Mitchell started off really hot, and it's unfortunate he's going to miss two months because, uh, you know, he's 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 a grinder and he's a very hard worker. Um, I thought our defense played really, really well. Um, they were suffocating the entire first half. Yeah, it looked um, really tough. You know, they – we had a lot of penalties, which is tough, and so hopefully we can clean that up. A lot of those uh, sliding, and then you hit them a little bit late, a little bit too hard, that's a 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. So, And then a couple of busted, um, busted plays for big plays for them. So you know, I think if we can 
eliminate a couple of those penalties, eliminate um, a couple of busted plays. I think we're right where we want to be. Um, big fan of the game plan this week, and I think there's a lot to build off of. So I'm excited. Seattle coming into Levi Stadium. It's going to be a great one. They're coming off a nice big W versus the Denver Broncos and yep. former quarterback Russell Wilson. Very emotional win. Very emotional win. So they are very excited about that. Um, but I know the, the the boys are ready to go out there and hit again. Uh, I think it was a really good week of practice. Like I said, the boys are ready to go out there. All right. And anybody on defense? I know defense overall played really well. Anybody particular on defense that you just – not that, you know, folks like to hear. Oh, I mean, uh, you know – Huff, number 29, our safety, he you know had a great game. And again, either 9 or 11 tackles and an interception. He was in the backfield all day long. Uh, it feels like they weren't even accounting for him. So it's awesome for him. That's great. Um, I thought he came downhill, didn't break down. He was firing his guns. So that, that was really fun to see. And you know, Huff's put in a lot of work. And to see him come out there the first week and play like that, it's awesome. It definitely sets a tone for our team. And uh, <clears throat> I think a lot of guys are going to follow suit with that level of play. So that's a big one. Um, I think Armstead, Bosa, I think our D-line played pretty well. It was great seeing Ken Lyle out there. He was demolishing guys left and right. Um, it's kind of hard to block a guy that, that's, that is that big <laughs> and that fast. So He's a big human being. Yeah, he's a large human being, and um, he's wonderful at the same time. So, yeah, yeah, and I, I thought that was good. I thought the tight ends, actually, all, they also played really well the entire game. Um, no critical errors by any means, and... Um, did what they had to do to help the team succeed and get some first downs and some points out there. So hopefully we throw the ball a lot more to the tight ends, and uh, that's going to be successful. Cool. All right. Well, then let's um, – we had something in between, but you kind of brought up Seattle. So let's just take a look at that real quick. Yes. So we have the Seattle Seahawks, really one of the arch rivals of the Niners. It's been a very, very competitive and uh, high-intensity rivalry for a long time now. So. It is. Uh, they come in off that big win over the Bears and emotional Broncos. Up, yeah, or sorry, Broncos. And uh, so, what do you what are you seeing on tape, and what are you thinking? Uh, new Q, new QB up there, kind of all that, and they've kind of changed. They've changed, changed things out. They've changed a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, they're basically running the Rams defense. That's what uh, basically everybody's running that now because of the Rams' success. Uh, so you know they have the outside linebackers on the line of scrimmage. Um, I think their best player is uh, number six, Diggs. Their safety. He's a phenomenal football player. Smart, comes downhill, hits. He's always in position, uh, has interceptions, forces fumbles. He's definitely their, their playmaker out there now that Bobby Wagner's no longer there. Yeah. So, um, he, you know, he'll, he'll, I think um, accounting for him will be a priority for us. Uh, they have three massive human beings on the inside um, of those outside linebackers. So definitely have to make them run. But um, they, they've got a good stout defense, you know, and then they still have playmakers on offense. They just paid DK Metcalf. Yep. Tyler Lockett's a phenomenal wide receiver. Uh, they got Noah Fan out there. Go Hawks. No, Iowa uh, Hawks. Iowa Hawks, not Seahawks. But, um, you know, they got playmakers. They got Will Disley, Colby Parkinson, tight ends that I got to hang out with the tight end you, got to hang right. out with them in Nashville. So uh, it'll be fun to see them after the game. Um, no kind words beforehand. Um, it is a rivalry. And, you know, uh, it was crazy. You know, Nick Bosa said it uh, today. In the last 20 matchups, the Niners have only won three times. That's not good. Painful. It's, it's painful. And I know Niners fans feel that. I think Niners players feel that. The franchise feels that. So there's going to be an anger, um, and there's going to be an intensity come tomorrow, um, come Sunday, when the 49ers take on the Seattle Seahawks in Levi Stadium. All right. Don't miss that. Okay. Don't miss it. All right, George, I guess, you know, one thing just, you know, folks know that um, you had a little groin thing going on. Mm. Um, didn't play last week, and you're kind of day-to-day -day as we go here. But, yes, um, you know, you know, you being a captain, we talked about that last week in the fifth year and all that kind of stuff. What is, um, you know, how does your role change, you know, when you're not able to physically perform that well? Because I know you're super committed to the team, you know, love your brothers on the field and all that kind of stuff. But that, that's got to be really challenging. And, um, you know, like, you know, how do you interface with that and, you know, do that? Because a lot of a captain's role is, you know, you show up by the way you play. You know, I mean, good, yes, sir. good players tend to show up as captains often. So what what is that like? And I know hopefully that's a very short window for us here, but you're going to be back playing. But what uh, how has that been and what, what kind of things can you do to still kind of help the members uh, move forward? Well, yeah, uh, definitely a very frustrating start to my season. Uh, you never like missing games, especially something like that. Um, but have bounced back very well and excited to be back on the football field. 
um, feeling feeling much better than I was ten days ago. So, um, but the difference, I mean, it's always I think the easiest, not the easiest way, but you know, not everybody's an incredibly vocal leader. Not everybody wants to stand up and make right. the game day speeches and stuff like that. And like I said, a lot of guys rely on you know showing up and playing and what they put on the tape, and that's how they lead. And uh, it is difficult when you do have to miss and you can't show what you're capable of on tape. And so, it's frustrating, but. I just try my best to be as encouraging as possible um, to the guys on my team because we have a lot of young guys. Uh, you know, we have we have a vet team. You know, we have um, a very high caliber uh, profile of players, but we do have young guys at very important spots. You know, our interior line is young. Our quarterbacks young. Um, you know, we our our wide receiver core is still kind of young, um, right. just from a playing standpoint. So, just trying to be encouraging and just try to help those guys along, uh, keep them focused. But keep them calm at the same time, and just you know remind them that you know they're, they're playing football and uh, they've done it their entire lives, and it's just one step in front of the other, and just doing it at a very high level. But just having fun the entire time that they're out there, and I think uh, fun. yeah, I know one thing I learned from Bruce Bruce is that uh, if you have fun, it makes things a lot easier out there. So just try to continue to encourage them, keep the energy high, um, and remind them to be very angry and violent tomorrow. Okay, yeah, the three rules of youth football. Work hard, get better, have, have fun. fun. And then having fun is number one. Okay. Well, thanks for that. We're looking forward to getting you back on. Okay. Now we've added, so a little bit of the NFL, but we added a little college review. Ooh. So one of the big bow, games bow, bow, bow. last Saturday was the Iowa Hawkeyes versus Iowa State. Iowa State, yeah. We don't say them. We say them in lowercase letters. Anyway, we all know how that one came out. What's a cyclone? Is, is it a red bird? Or is it a natural disaster? Or is it a tornado? Like, what is it? We'll have Brock Purdy on to discuss. We're going to have to get Brock on to do that. Yeah. But, it, yeah, the Hawks lost. Um, started the game off with a block punt. Two plays, touchdown. Didn't do much after that except for a block into their punt. So, you know, shout out Coach Woods, special teams coordinator at Iowa. Putting on a hell of a yeah. clinic there on special teams week in and week out. Yep. Um, but yeah, just didn't get the job done. Couldn't couldn't do it. It's unfortunate. Um, I suggest we just keep giving the ball to the tight ends as much as possible, <laughs> and uh, let's run more outside zone. Would love to see more outside zone. Outside zone, you think? Yeah, but I don't. You know what? Just it is what it is, and uh, just going to continue to support my Iowa Hawkeyes. Now, speaking of Mr. Purdy, him being a Cologne graduate, yes. Uh, did you guys have a slight wager on this one? We did have a wager. And um, what was the consequences of the loss? So this is the tough thing. It, what I usually do is um, you get to take a photo um, in your in your opponent's jersey and or whatever they have for you. So I usually have either an Iowa hockey jersey that's like a triple X that I put people in because it's way too big for everybody and they look silly. Or I bring in my uh, freshman year grout fit, which is just a gray hoodie and gray sweatpants with my number and Sharpie on them. Shout out Iowa. They Sharpie all of their stuff. They don't use stickers or anything like that. That's... <laughs> No, it's way too difficult. They sharpie everything, so it looks like we're in high school still. Good job, guys. Good job. But um, unfortunately, we lost, and so what is Purdy got you doing? Well, so here's the thing: it's tough for Purdy. There's a one week limit on this photo, and he never, never got his stuff in here on time. He uh, had a Brock Purdy jersey on the way, and apparently got delayed in shipping. Not my problem. Iowa Hawkeyes have kicked off already, and so I am out of that. And now he so, no longer gets a photo of so me. So that's part of the wager? Is it has to I'm be not going to, well, you want me to wait three weeks for him to get a, for something to put me in? That's not how it works. We're on to the next week. Bam. That's tough for you, Brock. How about you, how about you execute your two-minute drill and go score a touchdown? Don't, don't blame delay of shipping, Brock. Jeez okay. Louise. But you know, let's move on let's from Iowa on. State. Yeah. And this is just for you, Mr. William Compton. What's going on in Nebraska, man? What's going on? Lots of, we're just, we're losing. Woo. Losing at home, Who's Georgia it? Georgia Southern head coach gets fired, and then I think they had Oklahoma today. That didn't go very well either. I know that, you know, I was rooting for you too. I'm, you know, I'm 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 back in Will Compton this year, and I think I think I should stop backing you because ever since I told you I was back in the Corn Huskers, you guys have lost. So I'll I'll remove that. I guess I'll try not to support you. And I, like I'm not actually supporting the Corn Corn Huskers. I'm actually supporting Will, Will Compton. Yeah. Because he is, he loves you guys so much, and yeah. he just pours his heart and soul into that program. And the pain he must feel and endure by watching those games. Oh, it just has to be so, oh. so painful. And for, for so many years. Jeez, literally, yeah, for a long time. <sighs> Damn, Will. Just so painful. We're so sorry for you, Will. Will, you're a good guy. We, we care about you. You're a great guy, but we feel for you. Wow. Will. 
Okay. Super tough. You know, I think this week, this show, we need to kind of continue the Nebraska focus. Mm-hmm. And so we'll just check in, see how the Nebraska guys are going. We'll check in weekly for Will Compton. And Will, you're not alone. If, you've, if you know, you get a little bit in the gray there, just give us a call. We're glad to. We're here for you, Will Compton. We're, we're here for you. Okay. Then, uh, let's see. Uh, other thing we're going to do is, uh, off season, you had a couple new tattoos. I did. Well, you want to just get, we'll just do a little tattoo sure. review, George Kittle tattoo review. Hi, so this is Hobbs. It's from the comic book, uh, the comic strip Calvin and Hobbs. Um, it's actually fun fact, um, growing up with the newspaper delivered every morning and I would read the funnies every single day. Yep. Um, Sunday being the best day because it had like four pages. It was colored and it was uh, absolutely beautiful, longer comics. But uh, Calvin and Hobbes was basically the how I learned how to read. Um, I read it all the time. We had the books. I'd read every Calvin and Hobbes book multiple, multiple times. Um, but I really like Hobbes because I feel like I'm Calvin and you can always uh, create the world that you're living in. You just got to use a little bit of imagination and uh, don't let other people tell you what is or what isn't. So also I got uh, a quote, which is actually really cool too. It's from Calvin and Hobbes and it's also Hobbes' quote. And it's in the comic handwriting um, from that. And it says, I suppose if we couldn't laugh at things that don't make sense, we couldn't react to a lot of life. And I spend a lot of my time laughing at things because why not? And, you know, things happen and you just kind of have to deal with them and might as well go into every situation if you can with a positive mindset. And I think if you start with it laughing, it automatically kind of puts a smile on your face and it just maybe helps you think clear or react to things in a more positive manner. Mm-hmm. Wow. There's the mindful moment for this show right there is just being aware of that and taking a little bit of humor into it and realizing uh, life can be what it is, but we choose our responses. Okay. And then I also got, I think you can kind of see it. I got a sunflower on my arm yep. and that is What's because that for? my mom's favorite flower is a sunflower. Um, she always has them all the time. Uh, just these big, beautiful yellow flowers. And I really appreciate that. And I love having my mom with me. And the fun fact, too, is about that. The sunflowers, actually, it's a sunflower from my good friend, Eric Magnuson, former offensive lineman for the 49ers. Uh, it's from his sunflower garden. And so he sent me a bunch of photos, and I picked the one I like the most. And so uh, it's from his flower garden. So shout that's out to Eric. Shout out, Eric. Money bags, mags. Money bags, mags. All right. One of a kind. Now coaching football. Right? Oh, he is coaching, actually. Yeah. yeah he helps out with that. Yeah, that's what I thought. So and he's anyway. a and he's a um, manager of a reggae band. <laughs> he does a lot. Man of many talents. Man of many talents. Ginger so. Roots. No free shout outs, but Ginger Roots. Uh, okay, then... Uh, food, last... wine, movies, and Dini? Yeah, so... Wow. What's the Dini update? Food. Oh, we're going to start with food. Okay, go food ahead. Food update. I love food. It's been really good. Wine update. Cabernet is still my top tier. If you guys have any suggestions about a Cabernet that I should try with my wife and father and mom... Give me, shoot something at us. You know, uh, we'd love to try things out. Um, Let's do this. Hey, on that, so a wine selection. So if you guys want to make a vote, we'll tally it between now and next week. If you have your favorite Cabernet and you want to send it to us, we can do a runoff between the top two or three. George and Claire can try them and we'll select a Cabernet winner. We'll talk about it. Yeah. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it later. So, okay. Movies. Let's see. Movies. Mm. I'm going to shout out while you're thinking. Go. So, uh, you guys all know that we're part of uh, Emerging Vets and Players. We've been working with the veteran community. They just released the grand opening, and the premiere was last week of MVP, the movie. And so, uh, I just encourage you to, it'll be showing out more broadly. Amazing. And they did a great job capturing kind of the transition that veterans face coming back. Uh, losses by suicide in the States, which is really a tragedy, as well as what uh, a lot of former NFL and other former professional athletes face as they take off the uniform. So um, it's not a uh, light and fuzzy, but it is a a very dramatic and accurate portrayal of those issues. And one I think that we hope will raise a lot of awareness. If you know a vet or former athlete uh, that would like to get involved, check out the MVP website. Awesome. Movie shout out for me. I actually watched this a week ago on the plane. Um, I don't know if you guys remember this movie, released in the year 2000, main actor, two main actors, it's a cartoon, Matt Damon and Drew Barrymore. Wow. It's called Titan AE. It is a, uh, it's a movie in the future, the year 3028, aliens destroyed earth, a handful of humans survived, 
but there's a ship that has the ability to build a new planet. Matt Damon, his father created it and hid the ship. And Matt Damon has to go find it when he grows up. Very interesting. Aliens are cool. It's uh, very, very, um, it's very cool for a 2000s movie. But I just rewatched it. I probably haven't seen it in over 10 years. But I really enjoyed it. I don't know if you guys have seen Atlantis either, that cartoon movie. That's a phenomenal movie. It's uh, pretty similar like that. But I think you guys should go give Titan AE uh, a, a, a good watch. Now, my favorite update of the week, the Dini update. The Dini update. Uh, Dini is wonderful. She's cute. She's floofy. Um, she likes to give kisses and high fives. So... I'm going to actually go hang out with her as soon as I get out of here. There we go. Okay, very good. All right, then. All right. Well, George, we appreciate you taking time. That's kind of our little rundown on this. Um, we're very excited about the Seattle Seahawks coming in. We're excited for that game and looking forward to it, uh, as well as the next the rest of the season. And then uh, next week we're off to Denver, but we'll get to that one. Sunday Night Football. Sunday Night Football. So stay tuned for that one. So everybody tune in to watch the Niners. Uh, put a whooping on the old Seattle Seahawks, and we'll get the season rolling again, get back to one and one. We wish you the very best as you're in um, getting back on the playing field, and we look forward to seeing all of that going on. So let's close out then this week. Any, uh, any signs of um, hope or faith or belief or whatever it is, but like what, what keeps your motor percolating lately? What keeps my motor percolating? Well, just, you know. Well, um, one thing... Um, I think I talked to you guys last week about, you know, we just got a new place with some um, privacy and uh, just a fun place to be able to relax and turn the switch off, just kind of uh, recoup and um, recalibrate. Um, but while moving into a new house, moving is difficult. And something that gives me hope is the amount of love and support I have for my family because without my parents, my sister and my wife, moving into this house would have been incredibly difficult. Um, they do so much at all times uh, for me, so I don't have to deal with too much uh, when I'm outside of the facility or the stadium or dealing with football. So um, having um, having that sort of love uh, to support you is what gives me hope and makes me excited and lets me be me every single day. So thanks, Dad. You're wonderful. Well, I guess we better just end it there because there's not much more than that. Uh, we're hopeful and uh, just grateful. So we're appreciative of all these opportunities. And uh, I guess just a reminder on uh, the Hobbes quote, um, if in doubt, try to laugh and keep it humorous and spread kind, kindness and uh, a little bit of have a grace with yourself as well. And a reminder, you're not alone. If you uh, get too far into the gray for any reason, hit us up on email or whatever, and we're glad to chat with you and or help you get with somebody. So take care. George, have a great week. or have a great game tomorrow. We're looking forward to that and uh, the rest of the season. Cut! Alright. Hey, Bruce Kittle here. I'm at the AMC Grove in, uh, where am I? LA, I think, right? You are in LA. Alright, I'm sitting here with Nate Boyer, uh, star, one of the stars of the MVP movie. And we are about to uh, walk in and see the new premiere. So very excited to be here. And Nate, thanks for taking time to sit down Thank with you, the Hidden sir. Pearls podcast. So, of course. Uh, Nate was on our show uh, last year, and we talked a little bit about your career, Texas, Seattle, and your military experience and that. So I'll have the uh, that show episode. I should have known it, but it will be in the show notes. So if people want to see that, I recommend it. It was a great show. Um, so we're here a little bit just to get caught up with you, but this has been so exciting with this premiere. And as I understand it tonight, um, every city that has an NFL team, or at least most of them, the effort was that there's going to be a premiere show in this movie in those cities. Is that? Yeah, 30 NFL cities. It's playing tonight. Uh, some of the ones, it's some of those cities. It's almost over. It's so all on the East Coast. Yeah. Right. Um, and then five additional markets that probably should have an NFL team. So 35 cities around the country playing M MVP at 7:30 local time. Pretty cool. Very very cool. So all right. So and this is a great venue for that. So I guess. I, just for those people who may not know a lot about MVP, obviously kind of the mission statement is making sure that um, you still have a team when the uniform comes off. That's both for military veterans as well as retired uh, former professional athletes. And yeah. So we do that work, and so and a lot of it has to do around mental health, post-traumatic stress, depression, anxiety, that kind of stuff. Quick shout-out for Jay Glazer and his book, Unbreakable. 
uh, some of those kind of things. Jay talks a lot about living in the gray. Yeah. Um, I've had the really good fortune over this August. I've spent over the last six weeks traveling to different organizations that support um, veterans. So it was o Operation Surf. We went diving with yours. We went scuba diving down in Cozumel. Uh, we did equine healing north of uh, San Luis Obispo with a ranch out there. So we've had a great time with that. And I made the live LA West. I made live Chicago huddle. So Oscar says hi. So it all those awesome. kind of things. Love me some Oscar. So one of, the, one of the things that's been really you know dramatic for me is being, and, I, and I'm normally a Tuesday night Zoom guy for the LA but just how powerful that format is and what the huddle does for people. So for folks not familiar with it, there's a little 30 minute workout, kind of do some exercise, do that kind of stuff. And then there's basically an hour long, sit down and talk about whatever people need to talk about. So, um, and I'll just put a couple things out. It's interesting that all the organizations that I met with, they all were kind of huddle-like, even though they're not necessarily MVP, right. but they come in with common ground with veterans for the most part. So there's a trust level built there. They engage in certain kind of activities to build kind of camaraderie and learn a skill and do something fun. Um, and then they sit around and create safe space for conversations to talk about things that really matter. So right. um, anything else about the huddle or MVP that we just, just so people have a sense about what's going on with that to make sure they understand. Yeah, I mean, the huddle is the most important part of what we do at MVP. It's the most powerful part. We work out, A, because being physically fit is important, but the main reason uh, is to get people to open up, you know, and kind of promote some vulnerability there. When we sweat together, go through something tough together, we're more willing to, to share, you know. Bruce and I don't know each other and we just sit down and have a conversation. Probably not gonna get too far, you know, who knows. A little, um, little shallow typically. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. are always on guard, yeah. not willing to be vulnerable and all that kind of totally. stuff. Totally, but if we yep. just like got our butts kicked in, in, in this workout, we bonded, you know, and we become, uh, brothers in arms in a sense you know what I mean uh, and we're just a lot more open and willing to to communicate and kind of be there for one another so that's uh, that's that's what's important about the huddle um, and it's like it's a place that yeah as you said it's a safe space where we encourage uh, those that if we got something going on we're carrying around something yep. it could have happened 10 minutes ago or it could have happened 10 years ago if we don't talk about it like that's not healthy it's not good you know we need to be willing to, you know, to to just open up and and, uh, and be vulnerable, be be raw. Um, talk about when you need help, and talk about when you're struggling with something. Uh, because the other people in that huddle, they see that as an opportunity to rally and be of service again. You know what I mean? I mean that's the biggest thing that sticks out for me. So I mean, not the, the huddle itself is it, it, it started organically. Um, just one day when we were training together at the gym and. Um, and it's carried on since then. And Jay calls it his fight team, you know, having that yeah. fight team. And that doesn't always mean you're just uh, sparring. It means you're doing a little bit of uh, emotional sparring as well. Yeah. I think the other thing it does too is when one person becomes vulnerable, it opens the door up. Like, well, if they're going through that same thing. I can share what's going on with me. So I think it really helps facilitate other guys talking about it. Right. When we were at the equine healing piece, one of the things that came up is we talked a lot about, it's almost like a healing portal. You just you kind of mix all this stuff in and there's a certain magic to it and you really can't control it but amazing things really do happen within the house. so right. well then the movie tonight so that's what we're really here to talk about that's what's going on tonight so tell us a little bit about how the movie you know where did this thing come from and just your experience getting into the movie uh, i saw some of the trailer clips and all that kind of stuff it looks Super fun and really exciting. You look great Thank on you. good screen. I can't wait to see that. So just tell us, kind of give us the rundown of the movie. And I guess, what do you want people to know about the movie? And what do you hope people walk away from, you know, after they see it? I think the most important thing is understanding that this is the story of the genesis of MVP. I mean, how the organization started. Um, there's, there's a lot of heavy stuff in this film. We talk about... Um, people battling with, with, you know, with suicide and, um, and that loss of, of purpose and just feeling useless and alone. Those are like really common themes in this movie, uh, set in the backdrop of one of the most social places in the world, Hollywood, you know? Um, but it's real. I mean, that's just the reality. People, we, things aren't always as they seem. And um, I think I want people walking away from this to understand that there's hope in all of us and that just because you know I, I don't have something in common with the person sitting across from me uh, it doesn't mean or I think I don't have something in common with them it doesn't mean that I don't it doesn't mean that we can't connect on a deep level 
and that we probably have a lot of similarities. Um, and, you know, you look on paper at this former NFL player, you know, first year out of the league, was supposed to be the man, and he kind of struggled and had a, a tough career. And then this veteran who feels like, uh, first of all, he lost a lot of his brothers in, in arms overseas and some back home to suicide, but he also feels like he didn't do enough and he failed, you know, ultimately failed at that mission. I've heard, we've heard stories of some of the greatest to do whatever that is they do that feel like they failed, you know what I mean? Um, and it's just not the reality. We all feel like that sometimes. So I think people should walk away from that feeling connected to these people that maybe on paper they have nothing in common with and understanding that like I don't have to go to war uh, to empathize in some way with someone that's dealing with struggles back home. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, we often do. We, we kind of consider that we don't have more things in common than we actually do. And so kind of seeing that and hearing it from people really opens those things up. So we really find more commonality than, than not. And one of the realities, and I think Jay talks about this in his book, Unbreakable, and it's all about the huddle, right. is you know kind of learning to be okay about not totally being okay. And honestly, folks, the reality is most folks ain't okay. <laughs> but you know what I mean? We all, not you know, all the time. We all got a couple <laughs> bumps in the road. So it's just acknowledging that and being able to work with it. And I think as Jay puts it, being okay with our fuck upness. You know? right. And there's something about that. And so just to kind of living with that and creating a space where we can work on that. So and again, right. and making sure people don't, they never feel like they're alone. Right? It's always okay. I need help. And making sure they're getting the call. So, yep. okay. Anything else about the movie you want to kind of pop? Because it's, I know there's a lot and you got a lot going on tonight. So. Yeah. I just want people to go see it and, and hear our story and share about uh, emerging vets and players. You know, this is a good way to do that. Um, and, and so, yeah, watch this film. Uh, share it with people, uh, but share our story generally. Uh, go to vetsandplayers.org, check us out, and, uh, you know, and, and really, if you know vets uh, and athletes that can use our program, if you know people, uh, connect them with us because we're here for them. I mean, we got their back, and we know they're going to have ours. There's no doubt. So I was really surprised. A lot of those organizations I went to, maybe only 15 or 20 percent of the folks even knew about MVP. So I was kind of handing out cards and giving them addresses and all that, that stuff. So we're we're working to spread the word a little bit. So, all right. Well, then one thing, and you kind of mentioned this. So, uh, one, tell us how can people help and support. So, make referrals. Let them know about MVP. Just talk about it and do those kind of things. How can they connect with you on wherever that you want them to? Are you Instagram, Twitter, whatever? What's yeah, I'm. I'm personally, I'm at at Nate Boyer 37. Is where you can find me on online and all that. But we'll have all the links in the show notes, so you can always yeah. find Nate and, and, MVP. And, and for MVP, it's at yep. Merging Vets and Players uh, or at Vets and Players. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's I, I think that's it. Really, just just connect with us. Um, we've got a, a big staff and we're growing. We're in eight chapters around the country, and we've got two virtual options. You know, we want to eventually be everywhere, and uh, the only way to do that is for the word to spread. You know, and, and hopefully, this movie helps the word spread. Uh, but the best way to do that is the grassroots, you know, people, people just sharing what MVP is to others like you've been doing. Well, we're trying. So help people transform. So last question for you, Nate. What gives you hope right now? So you've been super busy. I know you're in Panama. I want to hear more about that. Don't have time probably to do that. Uh, this whole thing's really taken off for you. Yeah. You know, and then you've got this, you know, between the military, athletic stuff, and your work with MVP. But, like, in all of this, What's kind of grounding you and giving you hope every day when you're getting up and what do you see for that bright future? This might sound crazy to say, but a night like tonight, a Hollywood premiere is grounding me yeah. because of the people that are here. Yeah. We're going to look up, I'm going to be out there uh, down by the, the, the screen presenting this thing and I'm going to look up in that crowd and to know that most of the people up there are MVP members, MVP supporters, or um, people that help make the movie happen to tell our story, like that's amazing. Yeah. So that's just like, that's backgrounds me in just knowing that, and it gives me hope also. It gives me hope also just knowing that, you know, these people all came together and a lot of these people, as you mentioned, um, they do struggle and they've gone through a lot. I mean, maybe they went through something today and they're still here, they show up for one another. So like, that, that is, uh, that's my big takeaway from today. And it hasn't even happened yet, but that's what I'm most excited about. It's just go. the people, you know? Right. Here we go. All right, well, we're looking forward to it. I know you're gonna do a little intro to each one. I think we got two screenings. Yep. You're gonna do a little intro to both and then we'll fire them up and so we'll do that. We're gonna catch some more clips. Hopefully I'm gonna have a chance to sit down with Nate's dad, talk a little bit about this whole deal for him and how that's been. And uh, we'll sneak a few other interviews along the way. Awesome. So my brother's here too, if you want oh, to talk. Yeah, that'd be great. So <laughs> wish you the very best. Thank Again, you. we appreciate you very much taking time for us. Thank, Thank you, Bruce. Okay, I appreciate man. you, brother. Yep. Love you. All right. More later.
Okay. Uh, let's see. Bruce Kittle here, and I'm with uh, Steve Boyer. Nate's, uh, I was going to say better half, but anyway, father. <laughs> and I know he uh, thinks quite a bit of you, and he's mentioned you uh, in our conversations a bit as you're coming. So we're just outside uh, the MVP, the movie, and I know Nate has poured his heart and soul into this thing just like he has the organization. So I guess, you know, what I just wondering, give us some just initial thoughts because, you know, Nate's military service. And then, you know, look through the football thing after you got back and all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of been a crazy ride. But just uh, how, how have you pieced all this stuff together and then his kind of his evolution into director, actor, and all that kind of stuff? And what, and most of all, what did you think of the movie? Well, the movie uh, was very, I thought, very moving and very genuine, you know. Uh, yeah, and I just, it's a tearjerker. Right. I mean, like, so my background's football, you know, coached it. And that had short one and done with the you know one NFL team, and that was the end of that. So, but it's really emotional those changes and all that kind of stuff in the military thing as well. So I totally agree. Yeah. And, and watching the film, um, you know, it's been like a four-year process that uh, Nate's been going through to get this done. And I watched him put it together. You know, not just acting in it or even directing it. It just putting the whole thing together, getting the people together, um, Dreaming doing it up. the shoot on a very limited budget. Yeah. You know, it took a lot of energy, uh, not just from him, but from a lot of folks. So, yeah. so I'm impressed with the whole process, you know. And, yeah. And, and uh, it's hard just safe, to separate myself from. Safe to say you're a proud father? Yeah, definitely proud of Nate and my other two children also. Yeah, they're, right. They're, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's gratifying to see it, you know, really come to fruition so yeah. I hope it gets a, a wider acceptance and, and a lot of people see it and you know I don't know where he goes from here but uh, he's been an interesting kid from the get-go <laughs> <You know, laughs> and I mean way back yeah right you know and then uh, to see him finally find a passion you know that he was all in on and I'm not talking about movies I'm not talking about football you know I'm talking about starting with even back in 9-11, really, and, yeah. and uh, using that some, as an inspiration to go to travel the world and try to figure out what the heck happened, you know, yeah. and uh, get some answers, and then, and then to come back and then say, well, you know what, I'm going to join the, the military, and I'm going to I'm going to try to be uh, in the Special Forces, become a Green Beret, and he did, you know, which is, yep. I, I would never have guessed it, you know, so, uh, so that was... I think that was the biggest thing, really, was like making that transition yeah. uh, and then succeeding in that and and then doing the deployments and, you know, and then coming back and then, like you said, it, lack of, of PTSD is like, yeah, it's like his big motivator, you know, so, uh, um, so anyway, it's, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a really uh, gratifying and, mm -hmm. um, great thing you know because yeah. Nate was at a stage years ago where he could have gone anyway you know? but he, he went the right way and he sound, surrounded himself with good people yeah. and uh, it's just paid off and then the football thing and that was crazy I never would have been that and he never had played before you know, even in high school so uh, so to, and so to get here now it just seems like oh yeah <laughs> yeah right <laughs> right well then um we kind of talked they talked a little bit about what people took from the movie right. and i know you've kind of been on the inside a little you know his life some of the transition struggles that he's faced but like you said he just kept one foot in front of the other and kind of figured it out but when you walk away from this what what are you, what are you taking away from mvp the movie well for me it's just the fact that you know he he and jay came up with this concept of bringing in former professional athletes that, and, and veterans that they actually do share some of the same issues even though they might be on one end or the other of the financial spectrum you know economic spectrum but but realistically uh, a lot of things they experience are the same so to bring them together in this gym setting you know it's, it's just another way to, to deal with a, with a big problem and, and it's a, you know and it, and it is a, a way to find a solution you know, it might just be a small part of the solution, but it, you know, it's a great it's a thing to see it moving forward and having some success with some of these veterans that got, you know, the suicide thing is brutal. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, so I admire these these veterans immensely, and I just I hope and pray they uh, use the MVP platform or whatever yeah. they do to just to work through it because they're valuable people. I mean, they got a lot of they got a lot of talents and a lot of re- you know a lot of abilities, and they just sometimes it's hard to make that transition. And, and uh, so I'm hoping they will. Yeah, well, no doubt. Well, so we encourage folks to go out and see the movie. If you know a veteran or a former athlete that needs something, maybe hook them up with MVP. Yeah. And we're trying to grow, try to uh, reach out to more people and help with the transitions, make sure nobody's alone, and uh, for certain try to reduce uh, folks lost by suicide. Right. So, uh, Steve, thanks very much. Any final words as we're moving ahead? I guess we're going to the Phoenix. Maybe. I don't yeah, know. We, I don't know if we're going to make it or not, but go Niners. Go Niners. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you from Japan for watching the show. I uh, really love having all the guys on from George, Bruce, Nate to his dad. It's super fun just to see the whole crew and how many different pieces come together to tell this story and that are starting to make up our community. So um, if you like this episode, please share it. Um, it would be fantastic if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and also if you subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts and you can leave us a review, leave us a five-star review. That would be great. Um, It's another great way to help us spread the word of this podcast and the people and the stories that we are sharing. Um, Also, if you guys haven't noticed, we are starting to share something called HPP Shorts. Um, And the reason that we're doing this is because when we go and do different interviews, um, and we did a lot over the summer, like on location, in-person interviews, and some of them didn't actually fit into the podcast. And so either we did them later or we just, you know, we were with somebody and we wanted to tell their story. Um, and so not all of them are actually going into the actual podcast. And so instead of also some of the podcasts would literally be four hours long and I wasn't going to do that to y'all. So instead of releasing these massive podcasts, what we're doing is just releasing shorts. And so they're the smaller interviews, um, but you can either watch, we're going to, they're going to be on our podcasting platform. So actually, um, you can listen to them as a podcast, or if you would prefer, you can watch them on YouTube. Um, I'm sharing a lot of them onto our social media channels as well. So you can get them kind of wherever you want, consume it however you want to. Um, but I just, when somebody tells your story, tells their story like that and offers and shares this piece of themselves, we just really wanted to honor that and make sure that it was still getting told. So um, just a big thank you to everyone. Um, if you need some yoga practices, um, I've been sharing a game day yoga practice uh, this week. It was just a two minute meditation. So trying to show you guys that um, starting a yoga or meditation practice doesn't have to take up a ton of time. It can really be, you know, starting with one or two minutes a day. Um, my best advice to anyone starting a yoga practice is to uh, just start with one minute a day. It's so much better to do one minute a day um, and just to do it consistently. So just think of it like brushing our teeth, right? So when you brush your teeth, um, you're clearing away that actual gunk, uh, the plaque, any buildup that you have. Um, so think of your mind that way. So it's really important to kind of brush your mind, clean your mind every day. So just even, you know, a little bit is goes a long way and the compound effect. So either way, thank you guys so much. Go Niners. And we hope you guys have a fabulous week.